Hello, my name is Scott for SP Gaming. Welcome to Motorsport Manager. This is a game I've had for a few months. Back in February or March, I picked it up and I did record an entire season's worth of content, but I decided to delete it all and start it again for a number of reasons. One, including the music, at least some of it is uh, content ID issues with YouTube, or at least, uh, yeah, about that. And so I decided to re-record it without any music, which is why you either don't hear any music right now or you hear something I've added in. But as you can see, uh, yep, you, we have uh, we have sound. So that's a thing. Anyway, anyway, with that said, also I decided I wanted to do a few changes, play it out a little bit differently. We did pretty well maybe too well for our first season which meant of course the expectations for the next season would be even greater and that could be a potential problem because I've seen people do really really well and then they get screwed in the next season because it's like yeah well we got fourth place in that last season so we can go for like fourth or third and uh, yeah it all turns out rough to say the least. Anyway, we are going to jump into a new career and we are not going to do tutorials because I played this and yeah, about that. We are not going to use any mods and we are going to use session length medium, 30 to 40 laps on average. Uh, it's more like 20 to 30 laps, usually not more than 33, 34 ish. Uh, we're going to use American dollars. There's only three options, so yeah, month day format, all saves on. And we are going to call ourselves SB Gaming, of course, because of reasons. Our date of birth is going to be, uh, it doesn't really matter. But we can always pick a random date. We can just pick a random date because, uh, yeah. No reason I'm picking this particular date. We can choose uh, which country or continent we are on, and we can select a country, North America. You know what? It ultimately doesn't matter, but I might as well put in my nationality. And we can either play male or female. It doesn't really matter. This has no impact whatsoever on the game, so. Because reasons, I'm going to play female just because if I'm going to look at a picture of my character, I might as well like how it looks. So, yeah, about that. And so we have all these hairstyles. We have 13 hairstyles. So, is there anything in particular that I like? Not really. Not really. So, we're just going to pick a random one like that one. And that's good color there. And can we, oh no, oh, oh, no. Now, uh, glasses or no glasses, don't really care. And now, as a respected former driver, your very presence gives drivers a boost to their improvement rates as you, you speak their same language. It also helps with their feedback, which helps you to find the best setups. Driver feedback rating plus three. This is a very nice driver stat improvement rate increase. So, hmm, yeah, about that. You can also go X engineer, part design time, minus one day. This could be useful if you plan to build a lot of parts, although for the most part, I think it's a little bit weak. We have financial payments minus 5%. I'm guessing this is paying out, so yeah. Every $100 we spend, we save $5 of it. So yeah, about that. Every million we spend, it's like $50,000, so over the long run, this could be very useful. Political, as the political insider, your arguments carry more weight within the Global Motorsport Association enabling you to bend the sports rules in your favor and propose new vote topics for free. The 
there can be some use to this. You get uh, plus four each season, and votes do carry over to the next season, so you can accumulate them if you don't really care. And you can vote a proposal in for free of charge, or at least you can propose one for free of charge. You can't just automatically get one in. But with your plus four votes, you can basically change the rules of the series that you're in however you want. So, you know, if you are into that thing. And then unknown, no bonuses, no drawbacks, no nothing. No. Last time I went with X Driver just because I do like the driver feedback rating. It gives you more information during the practices and other stuff. Driver stat improvement rate is also nice, but I'm tempted to go with the money. Money, money, money. <sighs> you know what? I wonder, does this help? Does this reduce driver payouts? Yeah, let's go with financial, because I haven't. Anyway, we can either choose one of the existing teams in one of the three tiers. If we jump in that, we can either play on the World Motorsport Championship, which is kind of like F1. Asia Pacific is, I guess they call it GP2 or F2 or whatever, and the European Racing Series is like F3 or GP3 or whatever they call it. And, uh, and then there's also the GT, which I do have. I picked it up in the Steam, I think it was the Steam Summer Sale. So yeah, I got that. And so in here you have $125 million prize fund, $40 million for $40 million, 40 million TV audience, 10 races, 10 teams, go up to 11 races, 10 teams, and 16 races, 10 teams. So they write a lot, $500 million of prize money and that's the quality of the championship the team average so yeah how about that we have the gt challenger series i'm not going to be doing this because i want to play as the yeah the open seater car thingy so we are not going to do this but i did want to take a look to see the various teams that are in here now if you do the creative team the zrt will drop out but you don't actually pick up whatever they have. Although, actually no. When you create a team, you are pretty much a jerk core and everything. You got Predator, they're the weakest. They're the weakest because reasons. Archer, BMR, Dragon, Octane, Vexala, Silva, Firebird, MRT, Eastwood Motorsports, and Garuda Racing from India. They tend to dominate the first season. Their pressure is high. They're expected to finish first. And so, yeah, about that. I have played as Octane Racing. We did reasonably well. I think we aimed for six or something. I think we got like fourth, but uh, no, nope, we're gonna hop out of that and we are going to pick the European Racing Series. We can view the championship rules. So short practice sessions, 27 lap races on average. So yeah, the session length, 30 to 40 laps. This is, I guess, uh, the lower end of the average races. 40 miles per hour pit lane speed limit. Six man pit stop cruise, standard merit payments. Points for all drivers, double points, bonus points for the last lap, bonus points for the driver in pole position, road tires, Brutus tires, and all of that. And we're gonna hop out and we're gonna do the creative team. Anyway, we are, okay, once again going into the <laughs> European Racing Series. And here is our car. It looks kind of. Yeah, about that. Hey, SB Racing, yep, that's what I want. We are going to be from North America, Canada. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. It really, really doesn't matter, so yeah. We're from Canada, we are, our logo is going to be idea which I prefer. I've 
used this logo before. But I kind of like this one. Primary color is... Do we go red? And... <laughs> Ew. No, no. And white. Or do we go white? And say red. Or do we... No, it's gonna be... We need a dark color on a white, light black. Back of the black. Background. Must be racing. Do we go red? You know what? I kind of like that. Team uniform. This ultimately doesn't matter. But you can pick whatever you want for your door. Style of shirt. Let's just go with that. Hat style. It only affects him. So, yeah, about that. We're just going to go with something plain. Like, yeah, sure, that. Primary color, what was our logo? <laughs> logo was red and then black. Primary color, red. You want really bright red. Secondary color, black. Do we do that or do we go with white? Or black? You want know red and black? Oh wow, yeah, okay, but that. Now we got the livery, which is the, of course, what the car looks like. You can change this during the season, but it costs you $500 million. Now, I don't really like any of these. This is a free download DLC, so yeah, I didn't pay anything for it. I wonder if you can download Additional liveries. That would be interesting. Now we're going to go with some of the base ones because reasons. Now we have that one, that one, that one. But first of all, we are going to I'm just gonna put all colors to default. White? <laughs> uh, yeah, about that. Now, the primary color, we could do that. What is the secondary color? Uh, secondary color. Is that there? At least on this livery. At least on this livery, we have. There is a racing stripe here. Do I want this livery? Okay, the tertiary color is that. So it's a little bit more dominant. said if we do white that can be interesting and then the trim color we could do that um, let's do that and then how about that Although, no, I want that to be two separate colors. With that said, we could just... Yeah, I'm going to have to... Yeah, 
Yeah, we could definitely do that. All right about that. Now, the late sponsor, which is whenever you have a dark color on the car, it will use that as the color. Well, light sponsor, we'd obviously want to go with something white. And then the dark sponsor, we could also change the, and now we're going with the, nope, we are going to just, yeah, white and black. All right, that is our team, Kerr. That is our logo. Mm, logo design. If we, it doesn't really matter. Let's go with that. And now, investment offers. These banks are interested in funding a brand new motorsport team. And they want you to head up the entire operation. You'll need to keep your investor happy, so choose wisely. Well, we have root investments bonus. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. They can offer an average quality chassis for your first season, as opposed to a poor quality chassis. This helps fuel efficiency, tire wear, tire heating, and improvability. Three-star chassis in the first season. Small starting financial package. The pressure is low. We have Stonewall Bank. Starts off with plus 40 team marketability and a medium starting financial package. They have recently acquired a PR agency which will heighten awareness of your team, allowing you to sign better sponsorship deals. I would be tempting to go with that, although pressure is medium. Thing is, with this pressure low, most likely it'll offer you a what's your target for this season? I can say 10th place. We can never get worse than 10th. <laughs> but this is tempting. Plus 40 team marketability means better sponsors sooner. And our yeah, our marketability starts much higher. Then there's Golden Tiger Bank. High pressure, a pre-built test track. This is worth $8 million plus. Plus, you don't have to have the factory upgrade. Actually, no. No, no, you can build the test track right away. But this is a basically a free $8 million. But it's high pressure. Mm, oh, I'm so tempted with this. Medium starting financial package, which does mean a lot more money starting off, which means more money I can invest in the car, in the other things. Mm. But I don't really want medium pressure. I wouldn't be surprised. Medium pressure means that we have to come somewhere between fifth or sixth or seventh ish. Low pressure. You know what? We're going to take low pressure. And here we are. We have $5 million to start off with. Our income cost per race is $1.272 million dollars in the negative and that is of course because we have no chairman payments basically what happens with the creative team is that you get a large lump sum up front and then you have to plan ahead right now we're spending seven hundred thousand dollars on next year's car I'm going to change that I'm gonna go to cheap low five hundred thousand dollars per race and we could put way extra money, but I would rather spend the money as much as possible during the season rather than putting more of it away. Because if I were to go fat stacks, what it mean is at the end of the season, we just get all this money back. There's no interest accruing. We're just putting it away. We can't use it. We get it back at the end of the season anyway, when it's time to start design new car. So. I don't really see a reason to necessarily spend fat stacks or medium. So we're going to go cheap and we are going to hope that we do reasonably well and we can have the decent amount of money to, of course, purchase a, a decent car next year. 
So that is $500,000. We saved $200,000. Our drivers cost us $459,000. That is $55,000 for E. Ferreira. $184,000 for Faith Anthony. And $220,000 for Anthony Gomez. And I've played this before, so I know what their names are. Except Ferreira. I don't know what his uh, first name is. Because reasons. Race Mechanics, we're paying $2,000 for them. So that's that. Our designer, pretty crappy, $1,000 per race. Our factory upkeep is $20,000 and design center upkeep is $20,000. As we upgrade buildings, that will cost even more. We don't pay any... Then there's $70,000 of travel costs. We have $10,000 for tire supplier cost, tire type cost. Black Sea travel cost, that's where we were going first, $30,000. And fuel cost, $20,000. So this, these are all things we cannot avoid. We have absolutely no, nothing for sponsors, so that's a thing. We get no chairman payments. If you play an existing team, you do get a fixed amount per race. That's the difference between the existing teams and the creative team. In the creative team, you get the lump sum, as we will we'll see in one of these messages. Anyway, with that said, so we've changed that. Those are the standings. These are pretty much, I think, in alphabetical order. Alex Rogers is at the top because, of course, his name is Alex Rogers. And that's Cavalcanti. I think it's Andrea. Aunt Andrea Gomez. Anthony Sabato. Yeah. So our next race is in 16 days. Top speed is crucial, acceleration is crucial, high speed corners is crucial, practice and race is predicted to be cloudy, fuel burn is low, tire wear is very high, laps is 30, and we have those tires available. We have a couple of different votes here. We have addition of the G Vancouver GP, so this will be a new race added to the calendar so right now we have 10 races per season this would add an 11th and this is the track that we are potentially be running i think this is the straightaway or no 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 this this looks like pit lane right here all right about that we also have refueling ban Cars cannot refuel during the race. This makes things $20,000 cheaper per race when compared to a championship, which allows refueling. Interesting. Points for top eight. Points are awarded to the top eight drivers. Ouch. Spec brakes. Brakes can no longer be developed in-house. All teams use standard brakes at performance level 150. It's not that bad, so wow. Oh, ho. so I'm going to kind of want to save up my votes for this because points for top eight. Interesting. All right, yeah. Every once in a while, the votes will come up. In this case, nine weeks from now, the next vote is. So we have, might as well go check the mail. SB Racing Scouting Report. I'd like to present my initial report for the state of the team. Take a, take a deep breath. Our drivers are awful. Our designer is awful. Our mechanics are awful. You need to get hiring fast. You know where to find me. Yeah. Start us something great. You didn't just think you'd be handed the reins without any oversight, didn't you? Your investors have asked me to keep an eye on how things are progressing. I'll be acting as your chairman. I have the power to remove you from your job if things aren't, shall we say, going to plan. Anyway, I look forward to working with you. Rest assured, there is plenty to do. Yep, indeed. Getting things started. Uh, first of all, can I say this? That I'm amazingly excited to be your assistant here at this wonderful new venture. Just saying that I work for SB Racing gives me immense pleasure I can assure you I'll be working to I'll be around to update you with anything everything from around the team for now it might just might be an idea to start signing some sponsorship deals and looking around for some driver talent all right targets for the first season 
The first season, first order of business to lay down our targets for the year. The corresponding budget that you set will have to last for last you for all year. So be careful with your spending. We need to build up the team completely from scratch. Frankly, we have temporary staff and drivers, no sponsors, a weak car, and a shoddy HQ. Not much to do then. With that in mind, where do you think we can hope to finish by the end of the season? We can say 8th place, and the problem with this is that uh, we will be expected, even on our first race, to, to finish 8th or better in the team standings. Otherwise, he gets really unhappy. We can go 10th, it's pretty easy. Guaranteed that we won't have any pressure whatsoever. $14 million versus $16.87 million. Hmm, 2.8 million extra dollars. We have $19 million. We have income cost per race. About a million per race. Which means... After we take into this camp, we'll have about $10 million to spend. Free and clear, above and beyond anything our sponsors do bring us. You know what? It's a building year. I'm not going to try to push things more than we can. Just because you'll understand when we see the driver. So we'll choose 10th place. And so this is the chairman race payment. There we go. So if we were to take a look at this... You can see that our chairman payments are now 19 million dollars. You can see the last two transactions. Or it'll show the last other transactions. We can request additional funds. It's a little bit early in the season to be asking for money, don't you think? Once he gets really, really happy, then you can ask for money. And it's about 1.4 million dollars, I think. It's probably 10% of whatever you got for whatever you set for your target standings those are that now if we take a look at our car this is how our car ranks up we are 10th place we are 10th place we are 10th place we are 10th place we are of course 10th place now brakes is one of the expected things will be coming up on the vote so we are not really going to want to focus on that I do kind of want to put all my voting power. Uh, I don't really care about the re refueling ban. I kind of don't want it, but I don't, I'm not motivated enough to vote against it. I kind of want to save up my votes for this to reject that. <laughs> so this is the chassis we have, three stars, which is the average chassis. It'll be better than what you can build for next season. So we've gotten a pretty good deal. Improvability affects the parts, how much you can improve them. And those are the parts that we have. So basically, yeah, very weak, very weak. All around. This one costs $3.2 million, basically. And so we can design a new part. Let's jump over to our headquarters because there is something I want to do. This is, yeah. Basically, when we build the test track, it will be over here, I think it is. We look at here, we have... Actually, no. It requires a level 2 factory, so... If we had gone with the high pressure, we couldn't have gotten this. Which meant, uh, yeah, we would have been $8 million ahead. As it is, $8 million. What I would like to do... To start off with... We are going to spend some money on our headquarters. I want the scouting facility. 12 weeks, cost $2.2 million. Hidden drivers, set one unlocked. And it's going to cost us $66,000. Yep. And yep, we're saving $110,000 on this. So there is the scouting facility. We have upgrades. We are definitely going to be upgrading our factory. It gives us 10 additional part development staff and four extra part improvement slots because if we were to come over here and go to improve parts, we get two more slots each here and 
we get 10 staff total, or 10 more staff total. So we'd have 20 to move around. It will affect how quickly we can improve our parts. So that's what we are going to want to do. We are going to upgrade the factory, and that'll be 20 weeks. We are also able to unlock the tele telemetry center, the test track, race, breaks R&D, and we get 50% towards the tour center and helipad. That is nice. We saved $400,000 on that, only $7.6 million. Yep, I know, I know. Now, another purchase I wouldn't mind getting is the forecasting center. <laughs> It improves the base of operations when away from the race, improving weather reports and allowing you to see weather, weather patterns forming much earlier. This can be really useful for seeing if there is going to be any rain upcoming and it can definitely affect your ability to decide, okay, do we go on wets or what's the weather going to be like? So eventually we will be going for, for, for a forecasting center, maybe in the second, maybe third season. We have the team, the logo, and that European Racing Series 8. Really? Or is it just because this is all in alphabetical order? <laughs> yep, this is just by alphabetical order about that. Anyway, so this is the chairman, he's that happy. Faith Anthony, nice girl, plus five, so he's slightly happier than what he would normally be. We have, our job is secure. We have Anthony Gomez, who is a two and a bit star. He's not that bad. Yeah, with the X driver trait, we would have him at a 16. He is a narcissist, don't touch my hair. Markability plus 30, that is nice. And that is a permanent trait, so. What's his, what is his um, marketability? Anyway, we will compare him to Faith Anthony. So we can see on this side, five breaking to eight breaking, eight cornering to five cornering, 14 smoothness, eight smoothness, nine overtaking to 12 overtaking, 12 to 11 consistency, six to 10, Adaptability, they're all about the same crappy fitness. Feedback, 13 to eight, seven to nine. So they have some strengths and some weaknesses. And uh, yeah, their morale, nice form. So mechanic relationship, teammate morale, and chairman happiness. Kind of a useful trait. So if we were to break her contract, it would cost us $919,000. She lasts until the end of the year. Same with him. And cost per race, $184,000. If we go back to the team and we go to E. Ferreira, uh, he's $55,000. It costs $274K to break the contract. Yeah, about that. Now, with that said, if we were to keep him on over 10 races and never use him, that's $550,000. Now, if we were to break the contract, we're paying $274,000 upfront. So, it's about half the half of what we would be paying. So feedback is a nine. Driver details. Feedback's an eight. Anthony's stats have peaked. Yep. She cannot improve at all. There is no improvement coming from her. She's 34, she's getting on in years, and uh, yeah. So we'll be keeping her on, but not uh, any longer than that. Oh, Inano Ferreira. All right about that. He's otherwise crappy. He could be useful to race in practice. But we might be looking to see if there is anyone else. Complacent gives him a 
minus one to focus and plus five morale. Minus 25 improvability. Really? Ouch. So he'll just be sliding down. It's a temporary one, 20 weeks, so that is that. Marketability, his marketability is 21. Hers is 16. And his is 51 because of the narcissist trait. Love it. <laughs> Gotta love it. Now, if we take a look at our team and we take a look at our lead designer she's crap yeah she's crap our race mechanic she's crap and he's crap so yeah they only cost us a thousand dollars per race and I would be tempted just to say you know what we'll keep them on save money we don't really have to uh, hire any other drivers they're on a rolling contract, so their contract never expires. And, uh, yeah, how about that? But uh, we definitely want to have some better drivers. Rather, yeah. Eventually. But with the car that we have, the car makes a big difference. You can have the best driver with the worst car, and it won't matter. Anyway, we have all these various drivers. And once we, of course, unlock the scouting center... We will be able to get another set of drivers so pretty much these are all the teams and the racing series their cost per race and how much it'll cost if we were to hire them how much it would cost to break their contract so we'd have to pay this in most cases contract ends so about that now we are going to pick drivers or look at drivers who do not have a team. So we have Aurelia Demble, we have Sarah's Young, we have Falco Engelhart, he's pretty decent as you can see. Lots of double digits there. Frankie Kinney, not so great, although some of the numbers are decent. Sarah Thomas, she's not so good. Scott Price, Sergio Valdez. Uh, who are the... I think it's, um... Sergio Valdez is on ZRT. I think Scott Price is also ZRT. Or maybe Sarah... No, it's not Sarah Thomas. Frankie Kinney? Possibly. I think she's ZRT's uh, reserve driver. Possibly. But if we were to want to find more details about them, their traits... Uh, more information about them, what they're interested in. We can approach them if we want, they're not interested. But uh, we will need to, of course, scout driver. So I'm going to scout him. I want to scout him. Uh, Frank Kinney. Actually, no. We are going to. Scout Falco Anglert, top price. Uh, nope. We'll scout those to start off with, and then we'll add more of the drivers because reasons. These are the only ones that are easy to pick up. I know Falco Anglert is a decent driver. Um, he can perform really well if you, especially if you give him a decent car. So, yeah, about that. And specific ability. All right, let's take a look at designers. We have drivers that are, no, designers. And we have all these designers here. Um, and we can see, we don't have to scope them. We can already see their ability. And what we're going to want to look for, since if we look at car, improved parts, in this series the front wing and rear wing are spec parts, which means we can't improve their performance, we can't uh, design new parts, we can't design a front wing or rear wing, so these numbers do not matter. With that said, in the European, or not the European, the Asia Pacific Super Cup, the engine is spec parts, so yeah, about that. 
scouting designers. So if we take a look at her, actually, uh, she has 11 engines, not bad. 12 in gearbox, eight in brakes. Brakes could potentially become a spec part. She has eight in front wing, nine in rear wing. She could be potentially decent. So that's one to consider. Bradley Spear, nope. Uh, front wing and suspension, if we want to build those parts, she might be decent. Freddy Cooper, engine, gearbox, and, gearbox and brakes. Pretty, pretty diff decent. Hmm. Although, and front wing and rear wing doesn't really matter. I would be tempted to go with for him. <laughs> um, 13, 11, 8, and 8. 11, 8, 12, 13. Karina Ryder. Uh, Katie Paulson. 17 engines, 15 gearboxes. She could be actually be. KG Fujiwara. Front wing and rear wing useless completely to us. Ken Obi. 765, no. And Lilith Koskinen. 16, 17, and 15 on gearbox, suspension, and brakes. Uh, where? There is another one here somewhere. Uh, was it? What's his name? Oh, no, there's a. The list goes on. Luke Savage, 15, 9, 9, 11. 16 rear. Paul Trenoworth, 16, 17, and breaks the suspension. No. I think I've hired him before. But yeah. These numbers will add to the performance numbers of the parts that you develop, so you want generally higher numbers are better. Vasily Sokolov, I think I hired him. Engine 17, he's potentially decent. We are going to. And then Wayne Bellows. 14, 12, 10, 18. So, given that, Freddy Cooper, any Winville, Freddy, 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 you look good. Let's take a look at Freddy and known components. Performance plus 15, reliability minus 10%, on soft and super softs. These are additional components that you can get. No condition loss on first race. Wouldn't be that bad. Although, yeah, the value kind of disappears. Build day, build time minus four days. You can spend an extra million dollars if you need a part faster. Um, we are going to approach him and let's start the negotiation so his patience is one so if we don't give him an offer his expectations wages are fairly important to him the lowest we can pay him is 40,000 maximum is 121,000 Pretty decent. Let's offer him eighty thousand. I'd prefer a long contract. Let's end it two thousand seventeen. That's twenty one months, two years. Saying if he's not happy, he's just gonna say nope. We'll go end of two thousand eighteen. We can always ignore it like a nice signing on fee so we can pay him up to six hundred thousand dollars let's offer him two hundred forty thousand dollars and these are the staff that we have compared to him <laughs> 19 18 19 
Although, yeah, engine gearbox is probably what I'll be focusing on. Those are kind of yeah, the most bang for your buck. So $81,000, contract length, 34 months, signing on fee, $240,000. Unfortunately, if he rejects it, he's going to basically reject it. Only one X. So let's uh, send that proposal. And now we are going to also offer She would be the next option. Uh, we don't really care about the front or rear wings. She has risk level minus one, which could be very useful. And good commands take no time to build. Wow. Okay. How about that? Uh, yeah, let's approach her. And what is she asking for? Wages are fairly important. So 30,000 up to 90,000 so we are going to offer and she has 1x for 78,000 a race compared to what was it cost per race 1,000 72,500 she'd prefer a long contract so end of 2018 like a nice signing on fee 30,000 up to 300,000. So let's go 150,000. Yep, 150,000. And now we are going to jump back. So we have already we have offered her a contract or yeah, contract. Freddie Cooper as well. Uh 11 12 8 9 11 12 is meh. 17, 8, 11, and 12. He has build time plus five days. Unlocks an additional good component slot. Could be useful. Performance plus 25. Reliability minus 10% on wet tires. Enters. And he has no other, no other known con components. Let's offer him contracts so wages are fairly important to him so 48,000 up to 246,000 he has four patients so we can offer him 97,000 let's go 78,000 he'd prefer a long contract he'll like that both sides it's very important if it says it's not very important don't offer it because if you end up lowballing thinking you're going to give him he's going to appreciate it if it's too low he'll be not happy about it even though it says it's not important a nice signing on fee so we'll offer um, 240,000 see what that gets us and then go back to scouting have Kitty Paulson. I think we offered her a contract already. Freddie Cooper. We offered him. Her. She is interested. She has four patients, so she could be a backup. Worst case scenario. So yeah, 11, 11 12, 8, 9. Screen Rider 11, 12, 8, 9. She is also a potential one. Yeah, that's the thing. We don't really benefit from the front wing or rear wing. She is a higher star, so she's going to obviously demand more. So. She has, I think, she's very close to hitting her peak. We will approach her. And so 35,000 up to 112. 
Let's go 60,000. Wages are fairly important. No, 67.5. Prefer a long contract. She'll like that. She has four patients. Prefer a nice signing on fee. So 30,000 up to, I think, what, 3,000? 300,000. We'll go 150,000. We'll offer that. And she has risk level minus three as a legendary component. Wow. Huh. Of course, we'll never get to legendary components for quite some time so that's kind of useless in a sense now we need to take a look at race mechanics uh we want to look at the ones who are not working with anyone so we have her for this concentration and pit stops is kind of important for the races part fixes happens during the race although if you do things right you shouldn't necessarily need to Fix the parts. Chemistry only really. What does it say? Chemistry influences the rate at which a mechanic and driver's relationship improves. The higher the stat, the quicker the mechanic will bond with their driver. Reliability determines how quickly a part's reliability is improved through part development and performance. These are kind of like the important ones to have because they'll allow you to maximize the performance and reliability improvements although with that said you don't necessarily want a mechanic who has high reliability and performance what you'd want to do is find one that has a high reliability have one that has a high performance and then you put them on the specific so for instance if we go to improve parts we can switch these around so whoever has the highest um, performance number you'd put them in the performance and that's how that works so 10 and 11 or 10 and 9 although concentration the lower the concentration the more mistakes they make during pits pit stops and pit stops what is that exactly pit stop stat influences the time it takes to complete a pit stop during a race weekend Higher pit stop stat means a faster pit stop, okay? And concentration determines the likelihood of making mistakes during a pit stop. The lower the mechanic's concentration, the higher chance of mistake occurring. So that's that. So we don't want him. We don't want them. Billy Evans is okay, although Danny Cox, Gary Watson, 11 per pit stops. Performance of 15, concentration, ouch. <laughs> um, we're going to favorite him. Uh, wow. I would probably want Danny Cox for his reliability. Million of room. Reliability and performance. Hmm. I kind of don't want. Yeah, Billy Evans and Gary Watson seem to be the better of the mechanics. And these are the ones I went with last time around. So Billy Evans. He has a past relationship with Sergio Valdez. He was on ZRT, so that's a thing. So if we were to hire Sergio Valdez, who is currently unemployed, he'd actually have 12 weeks together. They'd unlock some perks so that's something to consider hopefully we shouldn't need this pit stops is all right concentration is all right he's all right for performance hopefully we can improve that and chemistry not that bad we'll approach him and so wages are fairly important uh, $46,000 from 15 to 46. 
let's offer his two stars, patience. End of 2018. Nice signing on fee, 4500 up to 4500 or 45000 We'll offer him 27000 and bonus size is quite important. And apparently you can say, target it first. If we come first, we will pay you $60,000. He'll like this because he sees, ooh, I could get a bonus of $60,000. But, of course, we're not ever likely to get first. So, we'll probably never pay this out. So, this is a little bit of an exploit, you could say. So, yeah, we will offer him that contract. And then, we are going to go back to scouting. And we are going to offer... That was Bill Watson, right? Or Billy Evans. He has no relationship history. His concentration's crap. Yeah. Let's approach him. And wages are fairly important. His base is 16, 16. Uh, 49. Let's offer him 33,000. They all prefer long contracts. Bonus size isn't very important. I'd prefer a nice signing on fee. 3,000 up to 30,000. You want? Know we'll offer him 21,000. And there we go. We have $9 million in the bank. We have our scouting taken care of. We have drivers. We haven't actually looked at drivers. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we have to, we have to skip the drivers first. But I may just stick with these guys. No point in bringing someone like... I think when I hired Falco Engelhart, I, it cost me like $450,000. Where is he? Falco Engelhart. Yeah, it cost me $450,000. I might offer him a lowball contract. We could approach him right now. He is interested. But we won't actually know what his preferences or expectations are. Cost per race, 319. That's his base. Yeah, 319,000. When you consider drivers, we're only paying him $220,000. So yeah, I bet that. Anyway, at this point in time, we have covered almost everything. We have scouted drivers, or we're scouting them. We are offered a few contracts for lead designer, a few race mechanics. Uh, we have a fan base of 0.2 million, so that's that. We have decent enough drivers. We're seventh on the grid, so yeah, about that. If we were to hire Falco Anglehart and drop Faith Anthony, that would shoot us up to first place. And to show, to explain how little driver skill really matters, if you were to take a look at Grid Racing, there are two drivers who are Beauchamp and Jean. They, their stats are atrocious. Their stats are atrocious. Like, if we take a look at... Uh, no. Garuda. Apparently their drivers are ranked first. Which makes absolutely no sense. This is not right. Like, you look at their numbers. I, I, once I... You know, we'll, we'll just scout them right away. Because reasons. <laughs> anyway, we've taken a look at the that we spent 10 million dollars Jeez. sponsors we have no sponsor slots available our sponsor appeal level is one star that is a breakdown we have a 22.3 percent once we get to 25 percent this star unlocks and then 50 percent the three stars unlock and then 75 percent or more the four stars unlock and we have to get a helipad 
in order to unlock five stars, but you need, of course, at least a 90% or better team marketability. Right now, our overall marketability is only 22.3%, and that's the average of these three numbers. So, yeah. We could have gotten an initial 40% on this, bumping this up by an additional 13% or so. So our sponsors' offers are going to be low. Standings. We don't need to look at that. And the calendar. So we have 10 races. We have the Black Sea coming up. These numbers matter. Top speed, acceleration to high speed corners. And how it basically works is that with the, so each of these numbers here, the performance numbers, they are, your cars are ranked based on their performance numbers. So the car that has the highest performance number will have the least number of lap penalties or it's a penalty to the optimal lap time. And as you go down in the grid, for each of the brakes, engines, front wings, you'll get penalties based on how far down you drop so that when you take them all together, you end up getting your total, you know, how many, what is it? Um, your lap time penalty or whatever it is. But there is arguments to say that it's only these that matter. Your top speed, your acceleration, your high speed corners numbers. And ultimately, it doesn't matter in this case how your brakes or suspension does or your front wing. It's these numbers that matter. And in the case of this, at least, top speed and acceleration, acceleration, you have acceleration there, or top speed. You got acceleration there, top speed. Those come back, top speed and acceleration. All right, I'm back and I had a little bit of technical issues. I might have had to cut out some corrupted video footage, but uh, basically what I was talking about, depending on what I ended up losing, the sessions tend to go about hour and a half to two hours for one month's worth of gameplay. And I usually like to split that up into two episodes. So they'd be about 45 minutes or so each. Maybe I'll cut some things out, the less important things. But I do not like to run the races on max speed. I keep them on the standard speed because there's a few reasons. First of all, if you're running on max speed, things are just flying fast and you completely miss things that might be happening that you want to take advantage of that you need to react to. And you might want to tell your drivers to start pushing or pull back on the engine mode. You might want to give them information you may completely miss the pits when you need to send them into the pits plus there is some tension that builds up when the game is running on normal speed where your cars will be battling for position and will they do it or will they not will they pass will they be at past will you achieve victory but when things are just flying so fast you lose that. You lose all the tension. You lose all the interest. The Yeah. So what I will try not to do is speeding the races up. I'll be sticking with the races. They'll be fairly lengthy race sessions. So races themselves may be their own dedicated episode and then everything else as the management. So you'll get one episode of management, one episode of racing back and forth so basically this first season is 21 episodes three weeks of motorsport manager anyway at this point in time let's like say thank you for joining me for this episode of motorsport manager thank you for watching my name is scott frisby gaming and as always have a good day